I just want to say that I'm excited for this one. We have shot cut versus calf cut. All right, so same rule as always, scoring will be based on a point system where both of these editing softwares will go against each other in different categories. Highest score wins. Quick disclaimer, I'll be using the free base desktop version of CapCut, which can be downloaded from their website. And of course, I'll be using the only free version of ShotCut for this versus episode. Now this category is subjective. However, both interfaces are fine. With that said, let's go over some key details. Now ShotCut has a familiar layout in terms of the world of open source video editing softwares, but I consider them to be the best version of the group just because of the proper use of space that they integrated in their software. For example, the main home screen of Shotcut is simple. You have your timeline at the bottom with a toolbar right above it and the project library with individual tabs, as well as the preview window right off to the side. Of course, then you have the menu bar on top, which gives you different options to customize your layout to a certain point. But they also give you pages, pages that you can use to switch and perform specific tasks, which I find that quite helpful and seen other editing softwares use it as well. Now, they also have a partnership with Glaximate, which is a animation software but they open up to a separate window every time you want to use the tool. I know it's kind of a stretch, but I did want to mention that just in case. Now I know Shotcut doesn't have the most appealing design ever, and some have said to find it a little bit intimidating, but it does get the job done. And I know once you use Shotcut more frequently, the easier it becomes. Now CapCut has a totally different goal in mind when it comes to their desktop app and that's efficiency. They make their layout as easy as it can be so that anyone who uses it can first know exactly where everything is and keep making as much videos or edits as they want. Now the layout is simple, absurdly simple, maybe a little bit too simple, it just depends on who you ask. When you open CapCut, you'll be prompted by the home screen that will allow you to do a variety of things. Inside the interface is pretty neat and sectioned off by four main panels, which are the player window, project details timeline, and the media playlist, which also has different tabs that can give you access to other settings and windows. CapCut also has the ability to customize your layout to your liking. So like I said, the design is subjective, but I will give this point to CapCut because of its simplicity. Everything is just easier to find in the editor itself in a way that everything just flows in your workflow. Plus, I really like the aesthetic that they're going for. And it's not to say that Shotgun has a horrible design, but it's just simply outdated and a bit confusing for people to use, especially when they're first starting out. The ease of use might be one of the most important factors to an editing software at the beginning. However, I think learning curve is a better title for this category. The reason I say this is because easy can be a subjective term at times. What's easy for me might not be easy for someone else and likewise. Given enough time and practice, any editing software will become a really practical and easy tool to use. Shotcut is often referred as a beginner's editing program just because of how simple it is to edit a basic video. But over these past few months, I've been getting a lot of comments about how Shotcut makes it so unnecessarily hard to achieve a certain effect or adjust a certain setting when editing. Which led me to think that while editing a basic video in Shotcut is simple, the process of editing and performing performing certain tasks, sequences, or effects is a whole different ballgame. And I'll go into this a little bit more in the features section of the video, but it's totally true. For example, adding text in Shotcut is a totally different process from other editors like CapCut. Shotcut is just a little bit more nuanced when it comes to making certain effects, which makes it a little bit harder for people to use, especially if it's their first time using Shotcut, and that causes the learning curve to go even higher. CapCut, however, is all about efficiency and making everything so clear that the learning curve is pretty low for new users. All of a sudden, complicated tasks such as masking, tracking, or animation has become as simple as selecting apply. This is exactly why CapCut has such a high user base, just because of how simple it is to use the software. Need I say more? CapCut definitely takes this point. Before we go any further, I just want to tell you how you can try one of my favorite music and sound effects services out there and get two months free when you sign up. That's right, Artlist has yet again hooked me up with every tool that they have in order for me to look for the perfect sound effects and music for my videos and they can help you guys as well not to mention the other services that they have in order to help you build your video asset library so if you want a fast and easy way to find the perfect music sound effects or templates for your videos consider checking them out and use the link in the description to get your two months free when you do sign up so thank you to artlist
Now, this is a tricky one. I know the main selling point of CapCut is all the incredible effects that can be done with just a press of a button. They have so many effects and features that can make your edits more dynamic, such as their new AI tools that they wrote out. And I'm talking about effects that can take hours to make in other editing softwares compared to CapCut, which can do it in a matter of minutes. And don't get me wrong, that is an important box to check when you're picking your editing software of choice. However, the only downside to this is the amount of access you get to those features. As many of you know, CapCut is a free editing software, but like many other free editing softwares out there, it also has its pro version, which restricts the amount of access that you get to use these features, such as their templates, their transitions, their special effects, and more. Now, it's not all of them. Based on the list here, you still have a good portion of them to use, but they really tried to push their pro version on you. And the reason that they do that is because that's where they keep their heavy hitters in terms of the game-changing features that you hear so often often from CapCut. Now, if money is not a problem, they do have different tiers that you can try out. But if you do know ShotCut, then you know that they have an extensive list of features and effects that they call filters that everyone just seems to love. But just to name a few that they recently added, they have Glaxomate as a partner for their animation software. They also updated their motion tracking filter to keep up with the competition, which is not bad. And they're also focusing more on custom made transitions that you can import into the software itself. Not to mention the extensive list of filters that they already have, which they always keep updated. Now, I do have to say that Shotcut does make it a little bit more complicated to add and adjust filters in their software and make simple effects that may be easier to do in other editing software, such as CapCut. And quality is not a big subject that a lot of people talk about, but I do want to make an emphasis here. And I'm not saying that Shotcut's effects are of poor quality, but I am saying that it's a little bit harder to achieve the look and feel of other effects that you might see in in DaVinci Resolve or CapCut or any of these other editing softwares. The process is just a little bit more different to get that look and feel. End of the day is just simply quality versus quantity. And the way I see it is that CapCut does have far more advanced features and effects than ShotCut. However, it is limited in the number of effects it contains in its library compared to ShotCut's list and the amount of access you get to set features or effects compared to both of them. So I'm going to have to give this point to ShotCut. Even though it doesn't have those super advanced features or effects that CapCut does, it does give you an extensive library of features and effects to use, not to mention all the access you have to all of them at a respectable and decent quality it outputs to. Now, I'm going to start by saying that this is a tie, and it's obvious why. For those of you who use ShotCut and are in the community, know that the developers and participants who work on ShotCut itself are a dedicated and responsive team, and they're always looking out for any issues that they post in the forums or any requests that they community has for the editor itself and they're really prompt to respond which is pretty surprising. Now, it's not always a perfect update, but based on their history, they have been constantly pushing many updates to the software and to the user experience itself, which I can say I do appreciate and I know that many others do as well. I even said in the past that every time I'm making a shotcut video, I always have to go and make sure I have the latest version because of how frequently they always keep pushing updates. Now, CapCut, on the other hand, also has a pretty responsive team, but my guess as to why they have a responsive team besides serving their community and making sure the user their interface is of quality is because of the competitive market that they're in. I mean, think about it. They're essentially TikTok's official video editor, and they not only have one version, but they have three versions of the editing software itself. They have the mobile version, they have the web version, and of course the desktop version. They have no choice but to keep up with the demand of the new features and the bug fixes in order to compete and keep their lead in the market. And at the end, that ends up working out for both of them and their users, especially. The users have a good experience on the three versions of their editing software. And because of that, they have a larger audience that they can push their services to. So like I said before, it's a tie based on their history. They're both really responsive in terms of optimization of their products and updates that they keep pushing out. So if you're worried, don't be. They both seem to be doing a good job as of now. Unless TikTok vanishes, then CapCut will have to find a new angle and fix all of that. But they're good for now.
I know this one hurts. A channel favorite shotcut completely destroyed by the new up and comer CapCut. But hey, CapCut is just something else entirely. An editor pushed and promoted to the masses of short form creators, which do have a reputation of uploading various times a day or a week. So they really have a really tight schedule. So it makes sense that CapCut has to make sure everything is on point when it comes to the speed at which one can edit videos. And I personally think that ShotCut is just a very niche editor that many people simply enjoy because of the community and the promise that they saw and still see up to this day. So yeah, two very good contenders for today's episode. So if you do want to see more, comment who you want to see on the next episode and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.